Welcome to the sixth presentation in the Building a Better Brain series. This one is on toxins. From 1908 to 2003, British writers had won just a single gold medal at the Olympic Games, and they had fared even worse in cycling's biggest race, the Tour de France. In 111 years, no British cyclist had ever won the event. In 2003, they hired Dave Brailsford. His idea was to look for gradual, small improvements. The whole principle came from the idea that if you broke down everything you could think of that goes into riding a bike, then improve it by 1%, you will get a significant increase when you put them all together. Bike seats to make them more comfortable, rubbing alcohol in the tires for a better grip, switching to indoor racing suits, which proved to be lighter and more aerodynamic, hiring a surgeon to teach each bike rider the best ways to wash their hands. They painted the inside of the team truck white, which helped them spot any little bit of dust that could have affected their bikes. As these and hundreds of other small improvements accumulated, the results came faster than anybody could imagine. During the 10 year span from 2007 to 2017, British cyclists won 178 world championships and 66 Olympic or Paralympic gold medals and captured five Tour de France victories in what is widely considered as the most successful run in cycling history. The reason we point out these small things is because other things may have a bigger role in our cognitive improvement, including exercise and diet, but eliminating toxins, although sometimes seeming to be a small thing, can have a benefit also. Medical conditions linked to toxic chemicals include obesity, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease, some cancers, and multi-system complaints such as fibromyalgia and multiple chemical sensitivities. This is Dr. Dale Bredesen's classification and description. We've seen this before. So we're on the type 3 toxin part which is a contributor to Alzheimer's disease in some cases. Toxic type 3. Type 3 is quite different than type 1, 1 1.5, and 2, and often presents with features other than or in addition to memory loss, such as depression, problems calculating, organizing, following instructions, or finding words. Type 3 is associated with exposure to toxins, dimenogens, such as mercury, high copper levels, and anesthetics, mycotoxins, such as mold, or tick-related toxins from Lyme disease. Risk for type 3 is not increased, but may actually be decreased by having APOE4. Some of the chemicals known to disrupt brain development and probably contribute to cognitive decline, including lead, mercury, pesticides, Phenylthylates, which are plastics, the polybromyl diphenyl esters, which can be in some furniture foams, and polychloride biphenyls, which can be in some electrical transformers, polycyclic aromic hydrocarbons, which can be from combustion of petroleum products. So we're going to Talk about three areas here in, in this talk, mainly clean water, clean food, and clean air. We'll start out with clean water. Do you filter your tap water? Check EWG's online tap water quality database for local contaminations, then choose a filter that removes it if needed. You can find this on the EWG website. This is one of the pages on the EWG uh, website. Just go to EWG.com and you see on the left side of the slide, 
There is the EWG National Tap Water Database. They're required to report this by the government, and this is an easy place to find it. So you click that, and you get to this EWG Tap Water Database, and you put in your zip code, and then for us, we choose TUD Sonora Jamestown, and it says there's seven detected contaminants that are in excess of health guidelines. We'll just look at these. Your water may be different, so you'd have to check your water, but the bromyl dichloromethane is 32 times the recommended maximal amount, and the chloroform is 120 times. The chromium is two times. Dichloral acetate is 28 times. The nitrates are 7.2 times, and the total trihalothane methane is 357 times the EWG health guidelines, and the trichloral acetate is 44 times. So chloroform was found to be 120 times above the EWG's health guidelines, with the national average, you can see here on the slide, quite a bit lower, and the state average is even lower. So it tells you what kind of filter options are good for these in the site if you just keep searching. It listed our water and our contaminants that are listed here that we showed you the main slides on. And the two types that they would recommend are either the activated charcoal filters. There are some kinds that you can put right on the nozzle in your sink and you can filter the water and change it about every three months or you could do a more elaborate system such as reverse osmosis. A simpler thing, just the activated charcoal filter would be adequate since the chromium and the nitrates were just slightly high compared to the other ones. This would probably be adequate for filtering your water in our area, but everybody's area might be different. So options would include filter your water with a charcoal filter or reverse osmosis, you could distill your water You can get water distillers. You can buy some tap water and you could use the reverse osmosis. We'll just talk a little about bottled water, which may not be the best solution. Large and small brands alike withhold basic information about their products. Labels of nine of the top 10 selling domestic brands of bottled water do not identify the specific water source or treatment method or provide contact information for customers seeking additional information on the water quality. These big brands, including Pepsi, Aquafina, Coca-Cola, Crystal Geyser, and six or seven brands produced by Nestle's of the top 10 brands, only Nestle's Pure Life Purified Water lists a specific water source and treatment method on the label and provides a water quality testing report upon request. So the recommendations, this information is mainly taken from the EWG website. EWG recommends that consumers drink filtered tap water. It saves money. It's purer than tap water. When bottled water is the only option, EWG recommends brands with high transparency scores, clear on the label, and advanced treatments. And as we stated before, there was only one national brand that was available. Chemicals in the nation's drinking water could result in 100,000 cases of cancer in the United States over a lifetime, according to a study released by the Environmental Work Group and quoted here by CBS News. Do you need all these products? Most homes can be safely cleaned with a few non-toxic ingredients such as vinegar. It's a good cleaner and it has antibacterial qualities. Baking soda or water, a HEPA back, microfiber mops and cloths, and some elbow grease. Skip laundry products you don't need like dryer sheets, fabric softeners, and chlorine bleach. Do you really need all those extra products? Are your cleaners toxic? It's hard to know without a full ingredient list, which most products don't have. Find out the ingredients by calling the manufacturer. Avoid the toxic one and choose green certified products whenever possible. 
Do you eat conventionally grown products? Check EWG's shopping guide to pesticides to be sure you buy organic when pesticide residuals are high. They have a dirty dozen and a clean 15 that you can find on their website. The dirty dozen listed in 2019 was strawberries, spinach, nectarines, apples, grapes, peach, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, potatoes, sweet bell peppers. These change from year to year, but strawberries have always been one of the top. The clean 15, which is generally okay to buy in a non-organic form, include onions, avocados, sweet corn, pineapples, mangoes, sweet peas, eggplant, cauliflower, asparagus, kiwi, cabbage, watermelon, grapefruit, sweet potatoes, honeydew melons. In a published study in food control, vegetables were soaked in vinegar for 20 minutes and also in 10% salt solution and water solution. And either one of these solutions removed some of the pesticides as listed here, the DDT, cypermethane, and chlorothalonil. Both methods worked well. The vinegar effectively removed pesticides, but left a residual aftertaste. A 10% salt solution also worked well. So a method for doing this for grapes and berries, mainly for strawberries, fill a large bowl with four parts of water, one part of plain white vinegar. Soak the fruit or vegetables you'd like to clean for about 15 to 20 minutes. Even five minutes, if you don't have the time, will help a great deal. Apples. Consumer Report wrote, Submerging apples in a baking soda solution for two minutes removed more pesticides than a two-minute soak in a bleach solution or two minutes of rinsing in running tap water. But it took 12 to 15 minutes in the baking soda solution to completely get rid of the pesticides used in this study. The baking soda technique works when you mix one teaspoon of baking soda in two carts water and then leaving it to soak for 15 minutes. Raspberries, for example, shouldn't be soaked, but should be rinsed with clean water. Only wash raspberries and these kind of berries when you're ready to eat them or they will spoil. The same goes for mushrooms. Wash them with water or rub them with a damp cloth. Pat dry with a soft cloth before using. So if organic vegetables are not available, here's a recommended solution for the dirty dozen and how to clean them and what method to use. The vinegar method would be good for strawberries, spinach, and grapes and cherries. Baking soda technique would be good for nectarines, apples, peaches, pears, and sweet bell peppers. 10% salt solution would be good for potatoes, celeries, and tomatoes. Do you cook with non-stick cookware? Replace them with cast iron, stainless steel, or glass when possible. If you're stuck with the non-stick Teflon cookingware, take care not to overheat it, which releases toxic fumes. Porcelain or ceramic is a good option. They are both non-toxic and non-stick. Do you have any canned food in the pantry? Cook with fresh or frozen when possible. Most canned foods, including liquid infant formula, are lined with biphenyl A, BPH, a toxic chemical that leaches into the food. Now we're going to discuss some fish. You can go to the EWG website and they have a list of the best fish that are low in mercury and high in omega-3s. They're listed here, wild salmon, sardines, rainbow trout, and Atlantic mackerel. Mussels are bottom feeders, so I generally don't recommend those. Canned tuna, halibut, lobster, mea mea, and sea bass. Fish to definitely avoid would be Shark, swordfish, tilefish, king mackerel, marlin, and any other large predator fish. These are high in mercury. This is a way to remember it. It's an acronym, SMASH, and then you can add trout to it. Rainbow trout is generally considered safe, even in California's streams. Most other fish in California are not as safe as these listed. So the smash fish are salmon, sardines, anchovies, herring, 
and Atlantic mackerel, but not king mackerel. And then we add rainbow trout to that list. So we need to reduce our dietary exposure to toxins. And this is a list on how that can be done. Choose organic and low-fat, non-fat animal products when you're going to use these, such as dairy, eggs, and meat. Animal fat store toxins and should be best eaten if eaten that are organic. Choose cooking methods that are non-charcoal and that allow animal fat to drip away and also steaming or boiling is safe. Consult local wildlife agencies before eating freshwater fish. Avoid eating farmed salmon. Avoid eating large predator fish. Check the Environmental Work Group website for good seafood guides. Use glass, ceramic, or stainless steel containers for heating and storing hot food. Ceramic coated nonstick frying pans are good. Avoid plastic water bottles, traveling mugs, and bladder style hydration reserves, and do not wash plastic food or beverage containers and hot water because it can release phenyl phthalates. Avoid using cling wrap. Avoid high fructose corn syrup and rice syrup and processed foods containing BHT, BHA, benzoate, sulfites, and artificial coloring and sweeteners. Choose local, seasonal, and organic products whenever possible. Wash all fruits and vegetables. Advanced glycation end products, also known as glycotoxins, are proteins that have become glycolated through exposure to sugar at high temperatures, such as uh, barbecuing meats and high flames. Artificial sweeteners, aspartame, is linked to neurological complications. Fluoride increases brain decay. Fortunately, the water in Tuolumne County does not have fluoride. Food preservatives and monosodium glutamate, MSG, accelerates cognitive decline. Trans fats shrink brains. Many fast foods, fried foods, and processed foods are loaded with trans fats. Plastic wraps. As of 2006, almost all plastic wraps made in the United States are phenolphthalate free. This was a good thing. Unfortunately, most are now made with the low density polyethylene LDPE or polyvinyl din chloride or LDP and PVDC. This is because LDP and PVDC don't adhere as well as plastic wraps made with PVC, but more worrying is the fact that LDPE may contain DEHA, another potential endocrine disruptor that has been leaked to breast cancer in women and low sperm count in men. It is possible for DEHA to get into food particularly fatty foods such as meat and cheese. For this reason, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, advised against using the microwave on any plastic wrap that is not labeled microwave safe. To earn this designation, a wrap must pass test that satisfies this agency. If you do use plastic wrap on foods heated in the microwave, be sure that the wrap is placed loosely over the container and does not touch the food. Do you use iodized salt? You should. Iodine is necessary to maintain your thyroid function. And if you're going to buy a specialized salt, you need to be sure you get some iodine from another source, such as seafood or seaweed. I'm going to talk a little about clean air. Fresh air is important. Open windows and blinds. If allergies or air quality make opening the windows problematic, then consider high-quality air filters. Do you use air fresheners? Don't. Most contain a number of toxic chemicals that contaminate the air you breathe. What material is your shower curtain? Avoid vinyl shower curtains. If you get a new curtain, whatever the material, leave it outside for several days before using. Is there fragrance in your personal care products? We don't know what's in fragrances, so it's safer to choose all fragrant-free personal care products. 
Always check ingredient list to be sure it is safe. Do you have extra products? Less is more. Skip cosmetics like hairspray and detanglers. Was your home built before 1978? If so, it probably contains lead paint. When repainting, use a wet sanding techniques to reduce dust. Choose low VOC paint and always paint with the windows open for good ventilation. Keep the kids away from the dust you create when changing your paint or getting rid of the lead paint. Do you have foam furniture? Foam products like stuffed furniture and mattresses often are treated with toxic fire retardants, so keep them well covered. Ask whether a product is treated before you buy it and choose natural fire retardant materials such as cotton when possible. Don't protect your fabrics and carpet with spray-on chemical coating. Simply clean spills quickly. Do you use compact fluorescent light bulbs, CFLs? They contain mercury and should be handled and disposed with care. Use them where there's no danger of breaking near children. Clean up broken bulbs quickly and safely. LED and halogen light bulbs have no mercury and would be a safer alternative. This last section is on a syndrome called Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, or SARS. It is a little bit controversial and mainly espoused by functional medicine doctors, but is becoming more accepted in the general medical community. So I'm going to go ahead and talk some on it. And it certainly has research that shows that there is some definite evidence. And there is research now that shows that it is a real syndrome. The reason it's been controversial is the syndrome is rather nonspecific in manifestations. Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, or SARS, also known as biotoxic illness, describes a group of symptoms, lab findings, and targeted test results associated with biotoxin exposure, and especially in people that are genetically susceptible. There is a list of 13 symptoms, and generally if you have at least eight of these symptoms, then we need to do some testing to see if you might have this SARS syndrome. The 13 symptoms for the symptom criteria are as follows, fatigue, memory, and problem finding words, weakness, aching, headaches, difficulty using knowledge, assimilation, light sensitivities, concentration problems, joint pain, morning stiffness, muscle cramping, unusual skin sensations and tingling, shortness of breath, sinus congestion or nasal congestion, coughing, increased thirst, confusion, appetite swings, body temperature dysregulations, urinary frequency and urgency, red eyes, blurring vision, excess sweating or night sweats, mood swings, unusual pain, especially sharp stabbing ice pick pain, abdominal tenderness or pain, diarrhea or loose stools, numbness, eyes tearing up, disoriented, metal taste in mouth, vertigo, static electrical shocks, scores. If any symptoms in the numbered categories is positive, it counts as one point. Positive criteria is met if at least eight of the 13 is positive in adults and six of the 13 for children. What else could it be? It could be chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, depression, anxiety, allergies, somatization, peripheral neuropathy, irritable bowel syndrome, post-traumatic stress disorder, Alzheimer's disease, type 1 or 2. What are the most common causes of these SARS syndrome. Number one is biotoxins from water damaged building, fungus and mold and its fragments along with bacteria and its fragments and volatile organic compounds. This is 80% of the findings. The other 20% would be mainly chronic tick-borne illnesses including Lyme disease and babiosis. What are biotoxins? For some people biotoxins are recognized by the immune system correctly broken down and removed by the body. However, genetic susceptible people have immune systems that do not recognize the biotoxins and fail to remove them, leaving the biotoxins circulating and causing inflammation throughout the body. To understand this, we'll review what we talked about in our first lecture about nonspecific immune response. 
the nonspecific immune response, the immediate protective response of the immune system, which does not require a previous exposure to an antigen, white blood cells, killer cells, and digestive chemicals, and others are involved. The specific immune response, or adaptive response, is considered the third line of defense of the body. Cell-mediated immunity, certain white cells have memory to previous antigens. Antibodies are also present and react and are produced during a specific immune response. This would be like if somebody had chickenpox as a child, they would have antibodies when exposed to chickenpox. Again, it would not be susceptible because the body would be able to fight the virus off. There are some initial blood tests if you're suspecting SARS. These are not commonly ordered. There is the C4A. You can get this done at Quest Lab or the MMP9. There is also an HLA-DRDQ genetic test to see if you're susceptible to these kind of mold problems. You can self-order a biotoxic mold panel at Life Extension Lab. It's an online lab test. It doesn't require a doctor's order. You can check your house for mold abnormalities if you feel that your house might have mold problems. This is called an ERMI test, E-R-M-I. If you find your house or office contains toxic mold spores, you must find the source and get a certified specialist or get it properly removed. This includes removing yourself temporarily from the environment and removing any porous items from your abode. Carpet is one of the main areas that biotoxins can grow, especially if the carpet is old. Generally speaking, if the house is a rental house, the landlord should replace the carpet every 8 to 10 years to prevent accumulation of toxic products within the carpet. If someone has this SARS syndrome and lab tests are suggested, the next step might be to invest in a high-quality air filter. Be sure you find something that filters at least 0.3 microns in size. So this is the completion of this talk on toxins. Our next talk will be on calming the mind.